thank you for always connecting with us via BKC Networks. You are a very, very important personality. That's how come we always bring to you um, your favorite superstars interviews. Intimacy, you know, I don't want to find some say Yes, BKC Networks on YouTube and we become part of the bigger family. My humble self, MC Portfolio, I'm here as your regular host, about to play host to one of the countries. Biggest export, music export, man. And so I will unveil my guest anytime on the show. But just so you know, the show is the portfolio. And here we don't miss it. We talk it all. We take a breather. When we're back, I'm unveiling one of Ghana's biggest crossover artists of the moment. Thank you for joining us. The portfolio. Before teach me before, say nothing the last forever. Forever, eh. What up, people? My name is Camido, aka Mr. Grind on Stop, aka Top Boy. And yes, man, this is my portfolio with MC Portfolio, man. Keep it locked, don't go nowhere. Subscribe, Mido, say so. Boom, the yeah, portfolio. And when I say Mr. Grind non stop, you know the name, right? Yes, sir. Me, 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 do, me, do, me, do, me do. Yes, sir. Fam, 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 family. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, it's man. been, it's been a minute. Yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah. Um, the reason why I'm so super excited about this interview is because it just feels like yesterday. Yeah. And I must say, Charlie, big up to yourself. You see. Um, you are not talked about enough, but for the fact that you hold the current record of the biggest YouTube views in the annals of Ghana music, yo, yeah. that's a big flex. Yeah, they say you need like uh, controversies to to be spoken about. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> and that's why it's like that. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, I'm blessed. You know, yeah, very gracious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You broke Sarkodie's record. Has he has he tested to congratulate you on that? Because <laughs> that has been one of his biggest brats. Ever since, you know, the landlord title, mm -hmm. one of them was because he was holding the unmatched record of mm -hmm. having the highest views on Ghana's mm -hmm. YouTube. And you came to break the record. What's your congratulations, every no idea? Oh, that oh but if you come, but, since actually you try. Yeah, but Loki, I know he's proud of me, you know. Mm. Like, Loki, I know he, he will be proud that, because I, I used to look up to him, you know what I right. mean? Right. Like, coming into the industry. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just, I feel blessed and I feel motivated to even work harder. Yeah. 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 That that's a big fit. And the fact that yo, some of us are a little bit party to this achievement because we handled the 100%. Ashanti region bit promotion of the of the whole sugar cane project. No and lie. that's how I can I take a retrospective look and say you have come far. Thank you. Very far. But there's still the battle between the, the the nationality ownership. Charlie Nigeria four person we are Camido. Ghana for us so monkey. But then it looks like Camido now feel more at home in the Nigerian space than Ghana space. Is that the, is that not the case? Oh no, no. Because people feel lately your utterances depict you feel more at home anytime you're around. I mean the Nigerian the Nigerian space more than the Ghanaian space. Um yeah, I just I don't I don't think that is true. Like myself, mm. I just I'm a global citizen. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like I I've always like um aspired to be a global citizen. Mm. So it's like I always put in work towards achievement of that goal. Do you understand? Now for Nigeria, the the reason why people and I feel like people just will judge things of Oh yeah, like, Ghanaians are mad at you in a way in connection. Shallow, with it. <laughs> like very shallow, like mm. you know, um space. Because for me, this is what it is. Like, um, you know the song Nipaya Adia? Osai. You know, mm -hmm. like if a Nigerian is doing it better than you, you give them the big up and then you learn. Do you know what I mean? Like you just give them the big up and then you learn from them. But I, I think that's where I stand. Like, okay, this is what they're doing better than us. Mm. Or this is what they're doing that's like elevating, making them elevate more. Mm. That's all I do. Like I always just try to give people their credits and learn from them, be inspired. But if you see it from like, a negative aspect. Mm. That is where it becomes like... P people assume you, you want know. to feel belonged. That is why you are trying every um, possible to impress I'm the Nigerian I'm 100% mm. Ghanaian and I'm an I'm yeah, Aflau boy already know. from Aflau. Like, mm. I don't need... Like, mm. I don't need No, to it's not about it. your nationality though or yeah. your, your, your origin. It's about the fact that people feel you are forcing your way into oh. some acceptance and talking down on our industry. Like a woman Ghan will always mm. like... Right. A woman will always um, chase after security. You know what I mean? Like, 
a married woman will still look out for secu- her security. Facts. It doesn't matter whether you are married or not. She mm. wants security. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, for me, I only want my security because if I'm in a place where um, my stru- structures that will enable me grow and right. not ever beg for money, it's not there. And you want me to sit comfortably there and shut up. You know what I'm saying? That is what the topic, sh- like the discussion should be about. Right. But I think that people always try to see things from like, a mm. negative angle. Mm. That is just what it is. Mm. Aside that, I'm a proud Ghanaian. I always love to wear Ghanaian. Mm. I always like to speak Ghanaian. You know, so, I mean, if there's somebody who 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 takes pride in his, like, nationality or in his country's whatever, like, I should be a part of these people. Mm. Like, you, should, you know, I sing Ewe all the time. You know, even my biggest record had Ewe in there. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I, I think that is wrong. That notion is it's, wrong. It's, it's so wrong. Yeah. Mido, you know, what is your biggest flex in the music industry right now, considering the space? Like, it's been now five years. Yeah. Five years actively. Yeah. What is your biggest flex? I mean, talk um, your shit. In, on this show, we talk our shit. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm not scared of anybody. Bro. I know, right? You've been vocal right. lately. So that's how I come out. Yeah, lately, you've been <laughs> very vocal. Yeah. What's um, your biggest flex? My biggest flex would be that I'm blessed. Like, I'm crazily like insanely like i'm blessed like that that's my biggest flex mm. do you know what i mean it's not even about i've done this or i've done that i just i am blessed mm. and that's n- like one of the reasons why i will not even like shiva or even like panic in the midst of like or in times when you know people shout and be like oh yeah one hit one and all that shit like i don't give a fuck you know what I mean? Like, I actually don't give a fuck. Like, I will just make my music and I know that that's just what is going to change my life. Right. You know, I've so, like I've had so many, like, instances where music has saved, changed my situation. So, I don't give a fuck about any other thing mm. but the fact that I'm blessed. Mm. That's my biggest flex. Do, do you think from where you come from, people misconstrue confidence to be arrogance because the, the fact that lately you've been vocal, staying true to yourself, wading yeah. in on issues, people like, hey, Kami do no abasso, and I say they ask, or Kassani Bosubi, and I say they ask, or Pesso Bona Jimbi. Where do you stand in this kind of uh, allegations that comes on you? Yeah, that notion is all around the world. It's not just my people. It's right. not just in Ghana. Right. Everywhere you go, like the moment you, st- you try to stand for something, mm and unapologetically stand yes. for something, people are always going to like, mm. you know, misconstrue misconstru- that for like yeah, arrogance. Sure. And yeah, I mean, to hell with anybody's opinion, bro. Like mm. if the opinion don't make sense to me, it's not helping me. I don't just, I just walk past it. Do you understand? Mm. Yeah, you just walk past it. If it's not doing anything or adding anything to your life, you walk past it, end of story. What state of mind are you in right now? I want to figure you out. Whilst we are talking, yeah. I want to figure you out. You are in a new state of mind, which perhaps I need to understand. And then now for you, so what have you seen? It looks like now you don't give a hoot. Like, yo, yeah. how is this? Like, what state of mind? What have you encountered? Actually, I give a fuck though. <laughs> but what have actually, you? I actually But care. the monster in you, like, where is it coming from? Like, the, I don't think this is a monster. Like, what is it? This is then? just... Um, um, the spirit of do what you gotta do, you know, to 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 survive, to achieve your goals, you know, because I feel like a lot of a lot of creatives tend to be very timid because of the notion that hey, we will we'll block, we will you know, um, get keep yeah. shit from you, mm. or like the moment you don't do something that people are asking, or like saying people are asking you to do, mm. and then they start to take you out, like. I'm not there anymore. Like, do you understand? Mm. Like, I just believe that I've got God, I've got my talent, social mm. media, end mm. of story. Mm. Like, I've got amazing people that mm. love my music. End of story. That is where I am. It's like a, an unapologetic state of mind mm. where you know what is good and mm. what is bad for you. Mm. So you go for what is good for you regardless. At a point in time, you I know. think you attacked one of the industry darlings. The fact that you virtually, apart from your clearly your talent mm. you clearly had the support of the industry like everyone was into the camido what kind of politics what kind of politics is now playing out that you you think that 
till this time around, no. There's, there's a. Have you been victimizing some something political? No, I, I just. What is this being me or industry, man? No, I it's not even that. Like you I, know something we day, all don't know. At the end of the day, mm. um, from my experience, that hasn't fed anybody. You know, like ass like kissing, being timid, ass kissing. It hasn't really fed anybody in the right way that they want to be fed. Like you are giving crap. That's what it is. Like it's like you are given something and told that yes, um, you should be you should be grateful when you know very well that this is what you deserve. So it's like once you start to think like that, you are marginalizing your blessings. Mm-hmm. You are marginalizing what should be coming to you. Mm-hmm. It's not like anything has happened to me. I've just realized that like when you try to like the word like ask kiss. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you submit yourself. Like you become, you become a slave. And as a creative, you can never excel when you're a slave. Mm. Like you can never truly excel when you're a slave because then your potentials will be damped down. Your 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 revenue or your in, you know output or whatever should come to you, your income will be damped down. Mm. That's just what it is. Like you should, hey, you should be grateful that you're getting five minutes to perform. You should be grateful that we're, we're yeah. paying you. Um, mm. 20,000. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like other people are begging for it. I'm like, do you understand what I'm trying mm. to say? And that's just what I've just learned. And I'm like, you know, if I feel like this is not good for me, I don't have to take it. You know, that's just, like I said, it's this unapologetic state mm. of mind. Mm. Know what is good for you and go mm. for it. Like just know your worth. Are you, are you facing any form of sabotage from the industry right now? I cannot tell. Because I'm not. Are you, you can feel it. No, I cannot tell. Like, I just feel like I'm blessed and everything is just moving, you know, according to God's plan. And I'm grateful for that. Like, I cannot tell if someone is sabotaging me. Like, I'm not God to know what someone is thinking or what two people are discussing behind doors. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You cannot know. Mm. All you know but is... But you know you have not stepped on toes. No, I don't think I've stepped on toes. Like, I, I've been paying my dues. I'm still paying my dues. Like, I don't think I'm stepping on toes. Like, nah. Mm. Yeah. But you know, like, people generally just don't like to be told no. Like people who feel like they have a lot of power or like they are like in a position to like, you know, whatever it is, like position of power. They just don't like to be told no or rejected. Mm. So once you do that, they will try to like, and I cannot know. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you're trying to pay me something that is not worth mm. my time. Mm. And then I say, oh, I'm sorry, I mm. can't do it. Mm. And then you go back and be like, hey, I'm going to show this guy. I will not know. This is what but, but one thing, bro. okay, some promoters <laughs> may say, say, yo, after Sugar King, Camido mm. uh, Nya hates no. Mm. Now he's overcharging himself out of the system. So Camido mm. is quoting outrageous prices in the name of a crossover artist, in the name of international artists. So maybe it is stemming from that angle. Have you <laughs> but, ever heard people? But the feel question it? is, when do you want someone to charge what they truly deserve? When? At what time? At what point in their career should they charge what they deserve? Now you 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 know that um oh there was this there was this thing mm. that I had before. It's like um um a doctor or a director or something like that. Mm. If they charge there's there's this um occupation, if they charge you, it's not I think it's general. Like if someone is charging you a certain amount of money right. for a service, mm. know that it is not about the service. It is about the years of experience. So if you've been making music for like six years and then in the seventh year, you have a big song that has blown internationally and mm. you are charging a certain fee and people are telling you that because of one hit song, you are charging a certain fee. That would be, excuse me to say, a shallow-minded like person. And then I'm saying, I'm not for cut one. No, one do you know what I mean? Had, like yeah. media and family. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just trying to tell you mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I don't think the creatives should even be concerned about this notion or this like perception, because you are not a one-hit wonder, or you are not like. Mm, but I've always said that even Sugar Cane sh- is supposed to be the worst song on your CV. It is, for me, yeah, exactly. For like, some of it us, is, <laughs> it is the years of building like, catalog, experience building mm. that and getting there. Right. Do you know what I mean? So, right. yeah. Right. And we're still here with Mr. Mm-hmm. Grind on Stop, Camido. And I think lately we want to enter his mind right now and know what state of mind he is in right now. Because it is like, say, say, dear, Charlie, if you only see on Unsubetra. But anyway, I mean, let's talk about you are one of the most traveled artists we've ever had. Like, you, you, when was the last time you slept on your own bed? <laughs> um, yeah. Last week. I've been in my bed last week. Mm. Yeah, but I don't think I'm like, I mean, I, I think I travel a lot, no, but I'm not. I'm here to know the I mean, continent. One of no, them no. Where, where have you been to explored yet? 
A lot. I want to know. A lot. You've, a lot. you've been to a lot. Almost all the continents. No, a lot. There's a lot of countries. Like, like mm. there are a lot of countries mm. I haven't been to. But, but wait, I work hard, yeah. so like it's yeah. just you know, yeah. uh, it's just work. It's not really about entertainment, like because we entertain, but who entertains us? Like, do you know mm. what I mean? Because mm. like mm. you're on a long flight, you get to a country, and you have to do sound check and mm. quickly go and perform, mm. and then you have to jump on the next flight. Like, who mm. actually entertains the entertainer? Mm. So yeah, we uh, only, for you, it's not fun for you. The experience is not fun. No, for the thing you. is, that's what I'm saying. Like if you guys make it seem like we're having like so much fun, it's like it's work. Do you understand? It comes with it. I mean, your work is therapeutic. Everyone would like to be in your shoes. You are from here, from Portugal to US to UK to Canada, everywhere. Is there a particular territory you are yearning to enter, which you think that sugar cane couldn't take you there that you are yearning to? I mean, explore. Oh yeah, the rest of the world, man. Like all the places I haven't been to, I eventually want to get there, like do Asia, you know, do Mm. like... um, North America proper, like yeah, South America. Right. Just just right. tour like the okay. fucking world, man. Now onto the yeah. next phase of your career yeah. and the announcement of your comeback. You had a monster hit, which when a white man defines a monster hit, you're a clear example to that. Yeah. Now, do you think that Ghanaians still measure you by the height of that monster hit? And in effect, even if you release something equally as super people feel hey what's your from mm, yeah people do that sometimes but i mean i'm just being honest and telling you that i see people do that mm. but not to say that it gets to me though mm. it doesn't get sure about me, that it, it was not because i was very afraid for your follow-up song after sugar cane seriously yeah. some of us were genuinely concerned hey, come you know they with the height of this no Charlie, follow up and also how much you close the eye when you're there yeah. Or Becca say you like there's no written book, like there's yeah. no there's no written book mm. telling you that after mm. you you hit like the ceiling, mm. like the next one should be see God. Mm. Like there's no written book, like mm. it's a process. And um life is like an undulating path. Right. You know, there are times when you get the highs, mm. and there are times where you have to be in the mid-range yeah. quite some time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I th- like I, th- I think it's really male meotic like uh, 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 meopic like yeah um, um for for, to, people. for people to, to yeah, do, yeah. P- p- you think people's appreciation of how the industry works is low in in Ghana I don't know I don't know <laughs> honestly I don't what know. is the some of the funniest comments you've ever heard about your your, your career after after I mean um, sugar cane the most know. ridiculous ones even coming I from people honestly. you expected to know better I honestly wouldn't even know because like. I honestly wouldn't pay attention to mm. stuff like that. Mm. I'm not denying that I've seen like comments like that, right. but I don't really take notes of like, you know, it was only during when I was doing sugar cane and um, somebody said, oh yeah. Uh, Cause it's like, it keeps climbing the charts and I'm like, oh yeah, let's get to number one soon. And then someone's like, it's never getting number one. Like, you know, um, yeah. Mm. And and it, and eventually happened, and I just like quote the tweet back. I was like, "Oh yeah, here we are." Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's just, and I feel like it's just social media, bro. Like mm. sometimes we all do it, man. Mm. Like social media is just for like we. Sometimes we just want to f- like do stupid stuff. Mm. Meanwhile, these same people who do that, like they actually follow you and fuck with you mm-hmm. the hardest. Like you and know, they what meet you so, in person and they so are still sometimes it's that. really just be like fooling, mm. and boys just be like fooling around. But you do know people are not taking your two year break. And the excuse you gave for that year to, I mean, I seen. I didn't have a two year break. Um, after sugarcane was on, um, Kaba, I had the follow up was good. You see, it was some right. of us, Kaba and all that. But you know, the level of NFL right now mm. has the potential of climbing on that pedestal. Okay. So even when you were releasing follow up, people still use the sugarcane standard to measure it. But I mean, for international superstar, every lady would love to warm your bed. Every lady. I mean, for for not whole, every lady though. I don't think every lady like. Have you ever been turned down yeah. by a lady like you? Yeah, like, yeah. I hey, have. Who's, but the point is like you were Camido by then. Yes, no. Like you are just a human being, bro. Like don't think like that. That star power don't work on everybody, man. Some people don't actually like that. So like, that lady, what was the hair? I'm just saying that. No, I'm just actually speaking mm. for ladies. Like I feel like. I respect them way too much to just mm. say like every lady would quickly want to like warm your bed because you're Camido or you're like, do you know what I'm saying? You're Camido. But the thing is, like that's what I'm saying, like not every lady would want to do that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. P- 
people admire you and like you should just respect the fact that they just mm. admire you. Mm. People are people just admire you mm. and you should respect it that they mm. just admire you. Mm. Don't start to like to to, yeah, to sexualize like, them and yeah, all that. But what like, do you, what do you think about superstars who sleep with their female fans? The fans want it. If the fans want it, then... You, you, but like you're advising right now, sometimes you feel that... No, I'm not advising. Like, I'm actually just like correcting. That she said that every lady would want to warm, um, um, warm, come uh, those warm, bed, warm, yes. warm my bed, yeah. right? And I'm like, yeah, but don't say that because not every lady would mm. want that. I because wanted you're to know if you're a personal experience with a lady when you were a Camido and she turned down your proposal and on what grounds? I wouldn't remember that. Like, I wouldn't remember that, mm. honestly. Mm. Um, like being Camido, I've only had like one girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Being Camilo, I've only had one girlfriend. Or probably like two. Yeah, but like probably I, like three. Nah, or maybe four. Nah, like two, like two. Yeah, two. I guess two. I, like they were serious relationships. Yeah, like I I like serious relationships. Like you know, I like serious relationships. But right now I'm just like out of it. Like yeah, I used to like serious relationships. So that's how it used to be, you know. But like right now I'm just trying to like stay away from like, um. Things like that. Ah, but so like, so the whole no, backstory no, behind like, the NFL thing, it's not as if it's it's one of those things. Like it's no. a true true thing. No, it was a true story. Like it was a true story. It was a true story. Like uh, like me and my girlfriend, like, you know, broke up and then I just And it's your fault. I just You're got not really um I can't tell, honestly. You can't tell. Um yeah. I mean, and I feel like that would even be like an outside conversation, but like generally, like not to like demonize the woman or myself, like it's a breakup and we both like won it, you know? So at the end of the day it happened and then however I felt, I decided to like, you know, direct it to music and I did. And I'm having a good time with it. You had a hit song out of your heartbreak experience. <laughs> that might be a blessing in disguise, or? I mean, yeah. Mm. In all things, give thanks. Now know? what could be so special about this lady that breakup could take this toll on you? Oh, like, you know, when, when it's real, do you know what I mean? Like, like people should stop like um, um, making it so cool for like uh, an artist to not be like ha- be in a serious relationship, like to be a player. Mm. Like stop making it so cool. Like it shouldn't be so cool. Like it's okay for an artist to like love and love genuinely. It's okay for an artist to just do what they want to do that makes them like themselves. So at the end of the day, if that shit makes you yourself, just do it. I'm just saying, like, it's mm. not general, like... So we normalize being a player as a superstar and you, you think you are one of those who... No, I'm saying that it's not cool to normalize it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm saying it's not cool to generalize it, like, yeah, every artist should be a player. Like, it's okay for an artist to be, like, um, a, a real lover or a lover boy and then, like, be a one-woman type of person. Do you understand? Mm. Or a one-man type of person. Yeah. But you never flaunted your relationship. We never saw you post that person. We never saw you in open, yeah. I mean, open places or events with that person. Yeah, because it's none of anybody's business. No. Like, I only just drew inspiration and made music, and that is your business. The music is your business. Like, oh, really? Yeah. There are other colleague artists who are really making some statement out of their love life, and it's also affecting their brand positively. Yeah, but I didn't think it was going It was necessary. Like, yeah, I didn't think, I didn't find it, like, profitable. Like talking about my relationship mm. or like sharing mm. it on social media. I didn't mm. find it like profitable. So I you didn't it. want to hurt other feelings of other female fans or other Not females. Not even about that. Picture. At the end of the day, like when you start to expose your child or your wife or your girlfriend or your husband on social media, be ready for the ridicule. Like when it's time, you know, you just set them up for like ridicule. And that's just what's going to happen at the end of the day. So yeah, they're mm. saying things that should be protected. Come on, bro. Mm. Yeah. So now... There is someone ready to be the Mrs. Camido, but probably be a Ghanaian. But that Ghanaian lady had heard Camido say that Nigerian women are more enlightened, mm. more exposed mm. than Ghanaian ladies. And the whole internet went haywire. Like Camido is trying to say, so I'll call Nigeria there. Nigeria na ma papa or what's up? Conversation be our money near that. How friends around you, ladies around you feeling about this statement? Or do you still stand by it that? With your encounter with Nigerian ladies, you think that they are more exposed and enlightened as compared to Ghanaian ladies? Um, yeah, if you watch the interview, like, I didn't, I wasn't trying to make reference to Ghanaian ladies. Like, I said that it was a mentality that we have 
you know, it's like being open-minded is a thing I've like experienced in Nigeria. So I actually said, I actually like corrected it and said, look, not just the women. It's a general Ghanaian thing where we would not really like be open-minded to like certain topics, you know, like certain things um, tend to become like so new that we, 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 we feel very perplexed. Like when, it's happening, like very astonished mm. when it's happening or when the conversation is being had. So that's the line in which I was answering the But question. what are some of the conversations you think you can have deeply with a Nigerian woman? That is your turn on. Like I said, it's not Nigerian women. I haven't even... But like, you are specific. No, no, if you watch the interview, mm -hmm. you would like, that's the crazy thing about mm -hmm. our people. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole interview is there. Like you decide to see the cuts and no, then it's, and it's tell and say even that. Even the cuts, yeah. clearly... Clearly, clearly was emphatic about the nationality. Yes, you could have the the except um, the, the the continuation might have said otherwise. But the cut you said it that if you go to Nigeria, there are women are more exposed and enlightened, and every topic concerning every other issue that you bring up, they are able to get involved, and that's a turn on for you. Yeah, um, if you're making a statement and you refer to like one person, and you you realize that oh, actually it's the whole banner, like oh, now nah, actually it's the whole mm -hmm. the whole like team. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that 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 what you should deduce from the thing is the person right. is talking about the whole team. Mm -hmm. You don't just like stop on where the person like made a mistake and mm -hmm. said one person, because in finishing the sentence, the person actually said, "Oh, actually, it's the whole team." So if you are going to summarize, you should talk about the person saying that it's the whole team. You don't mm. summarize and say the person said mm. women. Do you understand okay, what so I'm trying to say? So what kind of messages were you receiving? I was just in your trying DMs, to say in my the DMs, DMs after that statement, people, as, uh, ladies expressing disappointment. Ghanaian ladies, friends around you. I don't give a fuck. It is what it is. Yeah. Like. But if you don't give a fuck, then why do you think you owe Ghanaian's explanation justifying your smoke, your smoke life? That wasn't even life? me, bro. Like, that wasn't even me. Like, that was management. Like, person was handling the social media, thought like it was cool to like, yeah, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. so you do you still stand by that uh, the, the, the I, smoking? I, I don't think I don't think like we. It's, I think it's a stupid statement. Like mm. at the end of the day, sometimes you will make certain statements and then mm. you realize that oh, actually, I didn't explain what I was trying to explain properly. Like okay. that was like a wrong explanation. So you know let's. I mean? so, so today we have the opportunity to understand you better, so you might not be misconstrued moving forward. What was yeah. your position on the fact that people criticize you for smoking? Um, yeah, they, they did their thing. I mean, people always have an opinion on, mm. on a social, on, on a public figure. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. people always have opinions on your lifestyle because you mm. are public. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's okay for them. To but why did you decide to, for the first time, come public with your personal lifestyle? Because you were, we don't know Camido for that. What informed that? Or you're going through heartbreak, so that was, um, I mean, a healing process for you. No. Like, I, I don't think that there's a time... For something like I don't think there's like time like time stamp on like when you should release a song or when you should like want to like sleep on the floor or go to the beach or do something that you don't normally do. There's no there's no there's no date for that. There's no time stamp on anybody's life. So you wake up and this is what you feel like. You feel like doing so um, that very you day do. you feel like you. But the thing also mm. I'm trying to like what well, mm. I mean I'm just saying I mean mm. basically like but that was that the video like I wasn't even like paying attention that. Um, you know, mm. something was like being shown. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So that would be the only reason because at the end of the day, um, I wouldn't want to like inspire somebody negatively. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Right. But like, like I said, people who always like capitalize on the negative stuff and just like mm. post that mm. one is like say or mm. say all kinds of bullshit, bro, mm. bro. That's on you, bro. Because it's like people who do stuff in the secret of their rooms, mm. you know? Mm. People are already tagging you NDC. The fuck? Why, why are you tagging me NDC? I mean, so, I mean, <laughs> yes, because um, you've been very vocal, especially when um, we there has been that call for celebrities to put their mouth or put a word in the ongoing menace, which is the Galamsey. Very despicable. That is not even something that should wear particularly. So unfortunately, you wade into the subject and we are already tagging you. One, by virtue of the fact that people have silly notions that you're a Votarian, so automatically you might be NDC, and two, the fact that you are hard on this government and people feel that you are there's a political lens to that. What informed that decision to go this extra, knowing that it's a very, very sensitive field to touch on political issues how at is, this point? How is that very sensitive? I want to understand. Ghanaians think, think a certain way. Okay. 
So people feel. So that. I'm glad you know that Ghanaians mm. think a certain way. Mm. But so why would you so tread that means, on that? That means mm. that mm-hmm. because Ghanaians think a certain way, mm. you are literally being boxed. You can't say certain things. Right. But should that be the order of the day? No. Mm. Like, don't be boxed, bro. Like, just speak your mind. You are in a country. You are paying tax. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So should everybody talk? Then would we'll, like you're, you're ta- the person who is tagging you the whatever name mm, yeah. is going there to vote. Mm. Like it makes no absolutely no fucking mm. sense. Like, Have you been voting yourself? Yeah, hey, I don't think I I don't think I voted last year because I think I wasn't like I wasn't around or something. Mm. But mm. Um, yeah, not last year, I mean the last like mm. yeah, election. Yeah. 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 But, so yeah, what is know. it about this government that you're so pissed about? Yeah, if you ask me that I'll I'll I, that would be very like hypocritical because mm. then um you are pissed too. Yeah, I am. Of course. <laughs> but I mean, it might be serious of thing. Now, the baking one is the Galamse issue. Yeah. But it's, you, it's like, mm. it's if somebody's asking me what is, like if you're asking yeah. me what is it about this government that I'm pissed about, mm. I, I, you know, like I said, it will be very like No, things that have might affected you as Camido directly, it doesn't really, apart from like, the general one. I don't think it necess- Which one is the general one? I'm asking. Yeah, no, general but, one is the one no, you're Do you know why I'm saying that? Mm. I'm saying that because like, mm. it's very like clear. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so clear. Like, just a few days ago, I saw the accidents, like about three accidents back to back on the Accra Kumasi road. Um, the motorway, bro, shouldn't even, shouldn't even be called a motorway. Do you know what I mean? Mm. The tax on like e-levy, it's crazy. The import taxes, crazy. And the normal like the common amenities people are struggling it doesn't make any sense bro mm. it's like it's like we all know that this shouldn't be it but now we have to live by the fact that oh you know it's normal hey i don't know how street lights were high. oh ooh, i think street light now like why are you talking about street light because it's normal so now the citizens are having to like normalize mm. lack of social amenities Minutes. Normalize, and mediocre as a norm. normalize yeah. like being scared to go for demonstration, like normalize light outs at any time. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, oh, or oh, not, boom, light goes off, comes on, goes off, comes on. Like, it feels like, like normalized data being so expensive. The people are really struggling. And I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't, I'll be very sentimental if any presenter of like any position sits me down and is asking me that question. I feel like we should be in solidarity, mm-hmm. like talking about how bad the country is. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. it should be you and I, yeah, being in solidarity, like talking about how bad the system has become, you know? So yeah, that's have where you, I have, you it shipped, have you shipped anything like, recently from the port? Yeah, I have people that ship stuff all the time. Mm. And, and we know do you know what I mean? Like we know the the fees is crazy. Like I literally saw someone <laughs> showing the card that he bought for two thousand dollars, and if he tried to send the card down to his mom, it's gonna be paying around fifty six thousand Ghana CDs as import duty. Mm. Twice the price of the purchase of the car. Do you know what I mean? It makes absolutely no sense it makes absolutely no sense and it feels like we should be awake because then politicians or like the politics has taken a different route in In africa Africa. it's like oh we are liars and we are found foolish. So let's, let's, uh, well, now, uh, say when you say politics. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, po- oh, politicians are liars, but we normalize it. Like, do you know what I'm trying mm. to say to you? Mm. Like, we're having to normalize living in a country and being like, um, um, treated anyhow. So that's just what it is. I don't care about NDC or MPP or what the, whatever like mm. party I mm. care about mm. the safety and you know the sanity of I think I, I saw a tweet of us, uh, a, a, a tweet who a said people. that you were in this vocal in NDC time and you got your breakthrough under this I know you gave it yeah. to that person and I know yeah. that you really 
gave it back to But that. that is social mm. media though. Mm. So like you don't mm. get, I don't get too personal with these mm. things with these people. But like, even if you want to go on business lines, if the, the current government wants to, wants to, I mean, engage your services to perform on their platform, on business lines, are you taking the offer? Um, yeah, perform my music on what? Like on their platform? On, yes, on their platform. I'm an artist. And that is what I keep, I, I, I think I spoke about it today, earlier today, right? Um, it depends, like, I, I think certain um, dynamics would have to be, like, looked at. But generally, if a politician is, like, um, trying to employ the s- services of an artist. Of, of Camido, what would be the rules of engagement? Yeah, I'm talking about an artist, right? No, I want because to. Because I represent okay. artists, artists yeah. right? I don't think that it's a bad thing. I'm going to turn it around. If you're a carpenter and a politician or a p- political party is about to do their rally or like campaign and they're asking you, can you please like, um, like they want to like, they want you to carve the platform for them. What would the carpenter do? But wouldn't you bend your principle? If a political party mm. is employing a driver mm. to drive their executives mm. to, a, to a rally, to a, to a campaign, mm. What would the driver do? If a political party is hiring uh, masons or an architect to build their office, what would the architect do? But you think your, dis- your situation is different. It's never different. You, you, bro, you, like, represent, you represent the people. It's in never a way. it's never different. It's never different. I'll tell you why. Right. Because we all have the opportunity to influence one another. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We all have the opportunity to influence one another. Now what has an entertainer got to do with the, 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 um, the policies of a political party? But what has an, an entertainer got to do with the policies of a political by party? By gracing their stage, it's gracing an indirect stage. endorsement of what they represent. No. And you are lashing on them. No, I'm And sorry. so if MPP no, contracts you... No, that is and your you... opinion. And I, was, I also want you to understand that mm-hmm. your opinion does not make it right. Right. That... No, that is your opinion. I understand. And I stand on my opinion. That is like, what I'm saying. You don't think it's a band of principles. No. When the very same party that you are lashing on on social media for varied reasons, Galam say high cost of living and all of that, cause you engage your service and you're on their platform singing for them. There's got to the be... business. Wait a minute. There's got to be a political party in power. Right. At any given time. Mm. So it is very hypocritical. Mm. For you to think, or for people to think that a celebrity cannot work once it's in line with the political party, it is wrong. Mm. I tell you what, um, the driver of the political party's executives, the builder, the, the the media team, whatever it is, they are citizens. And when that political party is no more in power, they are citizens as well as when they are in power. Do you know what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. to you? So we need to get the difference right. It is very like, it's different. For example, if you're asking me to go and perform at the Galamsey site, <laughs> if you're asking me to perform at the Galamsey site, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the um, police is like ar- arresting people, um, um, what's it called? Unlawfully during a demonstration, a peaceful demonstration, and the police is calling me that while they are, they think the thing is going on, come and be singing That's quite insensitive, us. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, but uh, Grace, now, the I'm, I'm going to just give you a simple example. Please do. If you an arm robber, I wouldn't know. Right. Yet you are an arm robber and you terrorize this, this, the, the community. You and I, or people wouldn't know until you are like caught, right? Or apprehended. Now, if you are getting married to your wife and you want me to perform at your wedding and like, you can't judge me at that. People cannot judge me at that point. It is only when we know, do you know what I mean? mm -hmm. Like, so at the point, at the point, you should understand that we have a role to play for the society, which is speaking up when it is going on, when things mm. are going on wrong, mm. but not going hungry, like trashing out, like, like, like sabotage. And that's a mm. self-sabotage. Right. Like you're refusing to take a gig that has nothing to do with the, the, the country being run well or, or not. not. 
It has nothing to do with no, that. No, but that is a rally. That is a political or trying to get the people to give them another nod, which you have said in your tweet that why do you think we need to give you another nod to fix the same mess that you caused, which is as recent as 30 minutes ago? Yeah, I said in my tweet that mm -hmm. because I heard one of the political aspirants say that, and it was even trending, like make a statement that, oh, if I do it now, what would I do? Yeah, that's One that's the running mate of the MPP, our vice president, Dr. Baumia, okay. emphatically. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that means you're telling me that the kids are hungry and um, the, the gutters are being choked and flooding. Um, people are dying on the motorway. You can do it, but let's wait until after December, like after December 7th. That is horrible. Unless, of course, he was just joking. But if you're going to judge that statement as a leader who is like, who has the power to change the lives of the people, then, I'll, then I don't stand for that. Do you understand yeah, what I'm saying? It's clear now. So, like, it's dodgy, but generally, an artist would have to be an artist. Mm. Right. Generally, an artist would have to be an artist. Unless, of course, the artist is actually holding the mic and telling you, okay, my main cast, I'm in chairman, me, me, I'm not saying anything. That would be endorsement. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. It's like the president walking past me and, um, hey, hello, Camilo, and I'm like, fuck off. Like, that is abuse. Do you understand? Mm. The person is walking past you. He's a human being. He's a citizen. He's walking past you and he's saying, good afternoon, Camido. And you're like, fuck off. In the name of you disagreeing with how with he runs policies. the country. Do you understand what I'm mm. saying? So I just, like, the artist would have to be an artist. If I endorse a political party and say, wait, a papa, that would be an endorsement. How about if we didn't have water, good drinking water in my community, and then um, the minister or like whatever, the assembly or the whatever, member of parliament for that community comes to like fix that situation. And we say, oh, this man, why are you Oh, I mean, Shrano. What would that be? Right. Like I said, mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, Let's get it right mm. and not attack people mm. for no, for mm. like, for very like, you know. Trivia, trivia issues. Now, I, I've seen you and Stoneboy, you guys yeah. have some chemistry that I admire from a distance. I mean, how, how tough was it for you seeing your two favorite people competing for Artists of the Year this year? How tough was you was it for you? I mean, Kim Promise, and because, you know, lately issues started erupting, the fact that Kim Promise congratulated Stoneboy, Stoneboy didn't respond and all that. You, being in the middle of them, having knowing the relationship you have, last time Stoneboy spoke very highly of you, that you are one of his favorite people, and you know, Kim Promise and you and all that. How were you taking this whole back and forth between them? First of all, I didn't, I didn't tweet or I didn't say that the two of them were my most favorite people. No, but I see, no, no. I mean, Stoneboy has spoken highly. Yeah, I know. I'm I just said, saying. Like, but no, you, considering your working relationship with them, yeah. Kim Promise was part of your achievement as Ghana's most viewed yeah. by music video yeah. by, by music project now. Yeah. And so, of course, you guys have a relationship. Hundred percent. Oh, it, it's ruined now. I understand what you're saying. I'm just like jokingly. Making the, that. Oh, I but didn't I'm, say by that. assumptions. Yes, these are my see. two favorite yeah, yeah, yeah. musicians. Okay, yeah, I understand. Them. But yeah, um, what's the question again? Yeah, I said, how did you feel about the whole rift, uh, soft rivalry that erupted in their competitive artists of the year race this year? Yeah, they were not the only two people. It was just social media or their fan bases that were like actively pushing like their favorites. Like that's what makes it look like it was a rift between the two of them. Like. There were how many people and uh, mm, no, so six. many people nominated mm. for artists of the year. If they didn't have like fan bases that like you know uh, fan clubs or whatever it is that were like fighting for them, then that's that's why it looks like that. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I don't think there was a risk. Has that thing affected you? The fact that you know they are deserving because you have been nominated for artists of the year before. Um, yeah, before. I before, have. yes, and that very year, you will feel if you also had a fan base that puts you in the conversation. Perhaps you you you, you could have really been a, a top contender in the race at that very year. Like, let's not get it twisted. Mm. Opinions on social media are not votes, but you think they don't affect how 
things pan out. Like, you know? Truly, it shouldn't affect how things pan out. Unless, of course, they are voting. But speaking opinions on social media truly should not affect how things pan out. Yes, for example, there's an election and you come on social media and you're saying, ah, no, CDD for win. Nah, I think say CDD for really take them. Nah, I think, nah, oh, um, um, WPC for, for this one, DAB, WPC. Oh, no, me, ah, I feel say WPC for take them. And you people are doing all that banter on social media. How does that affect the, the final result? I don't think we have precedence no. of social media getting results for most of the decisions that is... I'm only saying that mm. the election would have been based on votes. Okay. So your opinion on social media, how would that directly affect like mm. the votes? Mm. You go and vote for who you want to vote for. Mm. So for example, if you're voting for me and yet you are talking about um, someone else on social media or like... Um, tapping their back on social media. How does that vote for that person? Like that, that tweet or that post on social media is not counted as a vote mm. for the other person. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, are you who, sometimes forced to have an organized fan base owing to how things work out in the industry now? I don't think I understand the question. Like sometimes are you forced mm. to have an organized, you know, we have this SM, we have Beam, we have, and it looks like it play out in the favor mostly for these artists. Sometimes are you pressured to also go that way? Because fan literally your brother is now towing that tangent, can promise. Now having a fan army, which is trying to be organized because of how the race turned out last year, this year, early this year. Having an organized like fan base is a good thing. It's a positive thing like for um, an artist mm. or a brand at the end of the day. But how Ghanaians weaponize the fan base against each other? How, do you think it's, it's being positive for the industry? I think it's just show business, bro. I think it's just show business. I think people just like, it's just show business. Mm. So deep down, I don't I don't think it's a big deal. Mm. But I think it's just show business. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Have you still snapped yourself out of the fact that you are a BET nominee? Snap out because it looks like it, they, they, they come so early. Like, yo, I am a BT nominee, and there cannot be any erasing, there cannot be any fading to that statement or that truth. Mm, mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm, that is the reality. I am mm. a BT nominee. No, but sometimes you see, <laughs> like, sometimes you like, hey, Charlie, on the most of you guys are aware that I'm a BT nominee, or now nah, nah, because it looks like, I mean, people hardly see you from that perspective that you really took Ghana to BET, maybe. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Like, maybe they do, maybe they don't. And I'm not, I'm never really like jealous of, of. where the conversation is going. Mm. Like, I know, like, truly. But why have you updated your profiles as a BET nominee? I haven't. I haven't. I mean, though, you I, took Ghana to BET, and I that is not on I, your profile. I haven't done that. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. But that don't change. If you, if you Google Camilo, is there. Like, do you no, know what but, I mean? But your Wikipedia, your... It's there. Wikipedia is there. I'm a beat, you know But on your uh, socials... Like I said, like... <laughs> because you attend BET almost every year, ever, ever since your nomination. Okay, so if I have a G-Wagon, G63, and I and I decide to drive um, my Benz, like, a, sorry, I mean a C-Class, to all events or whatever it is. You don't see me driving in my G-Wagon. That don't change the fact that I have a fucking G-Wagon. Like, I want you to get the fact that it's not about being spoken about. But this industry, like, sometimes if you don't talk your shit, people will rubbish it and I, sweep it under the cup. I agree. That's when you depend on that conversation. That's when your success depends on the conversation. Do you understand what I'm, I'm mm. saying to you right now? Mm. Like, I don't think that it's necessary. In fact, it's not about my thoughts, but... Generally, I don't think that anyone's blessings depends on people's conversation. It doesn't, truly. There was a time that Joe Metal won the Artist of the Year, right? And someone was like, oh, Joe Metal didn't deserve it. <laughs> I saw the tweet. He said, yeah, children of God, we are always blessed with stuff that we don't deserve. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's as, it's as simple as that. I did not update my bio on social media like BT nominee I'm sure if I wanted to update with all my like um my my whatever like attainments and whatever it is do you know what I mean mm. and the BT is not like um a validation that you are a good artist 
Yes, the BET is not a validation that you are a good artist. That's how you feel. I think... Because you looked at me with some type of like astonishment. This, the BET is not a validation that you are a good artist. That means that all the artists, all the top artists who haven't had BET nominees are not good artists. Well, this, <laughs> this, this is debatable though. But I think it's a, one of the major validators for every career. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, BET is like Black Entertainment Grammy. So, I mean, that is why I see so much of a big deal to carry that along and all that. But the way you are trivializing it, it's supposed to be, apart from your, your achievement on YouTube, one of your biggest highlights in your career. You don't see it that way. You are saying it. I, I, like, I, like, I don't talk about it don't mean I don't see it that way. Mm. Like, I don't, like, mm. I'm trying to tell you that the fact that I don't, I talk, don't about talk about something it. doesn't mean that it's not a big deal to me. For example, my, if I don't post my little girl, my daughter, on social media, mm. and I don't show people how I'm taking her out to go get ice cream, and I'm, she's coming everywhere with me and all of that, and another artist is doing that. That don't, that don't mean that that artist loves his daughter more than me loving my daughter. Like, I'm only trying to tell you that. These things, talking about these things, don't actually validate. It's like, you are really, like, forcing and begging for validation. You are who you are. Okay, so you don't think that nomination hasn't reflected in your I think I think you're miscon- I think you're misconstruing. Then I need to understand. I think this. you're misconstruing what I'm saying. Yeah, that uh, you don't want to wear the tag of BET no, no, in the name of validation. No, no, no. Get it right. Right. I'm saying that the BET award or nomination is not a validation that you are a good artist. Now, I am a BET nominee. It's not in my bio. I value VGMAs too. I value um, any type of award, any type of congratulation. I value it all. But should I go writing everything on my bio? It will be like clumsy. I can't not just like, it's there. The fact is there. Like, it's there. I'm a BT nominee. Camilo is a <laughs> BT nominee. It's there. You don't have to like shout it to anybody. Like, if you want to know what I've done, fucking Google it. Utias here. But if I like, it's like, it's like wearing a placard, like, I'm a BT nominee. Hey, hey, respect me. I'm a BT nominee. Hey, hey, why are you not like? I'm I'm only trying to say that, like, we don't leave for that. Like these things will come, but that's not the ultimate. Your impact on society, your impact on the fans. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like that is the ultimate no. life, and you having a good time doing what you're doing. Mm. Because I'm just trying to say that I wasn't making my music with BET in mind. I mean that, like, I have to get the BET BET. nomination. I would have been frustrated and depressed and dead dead by now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because then if I'm aiming for BET and it's been like three years, four years, and I haven't had it, like, you're gonna start like start getting depressed. So don't get don't get it twisted. I understand. Like I value. Right. Every so let's thing. let's let's wrap up this conversation. Is there any corporate social responsibility that you do on the low that perhaps you don't want the cameras to be on? Because I know you are very passionate about some of these. You go to these deprived communities, you see the kind of water they are drinking. I saw you repost um, a project that Stoneboy had done yeah. in a deprived community, and you were so passionate about it and all that. Yeah. Is there something that you do around those stuff that you don't put on cameras? Because we hardly see Camido on a corporate social responsibility move. Gathering all these influences and all that. Yeah. What is it with the Camido brand that we don't First know? of all, you've, you, uh, you actually mentioned something about Stoneboy and I didn't address it. Like, shout outs to Stoneboy. Like, mm. he's been very supportive behind the cameras. You know, he's been very, very supportive. And he has inspired me on, like, my journey. So, yes. And, um, yeah, we just happened to, like, um, connect and um, um, align so well, which is, like, a blessing to have mm. an OG at that level, like, um, admire you, you know? So I feel blessed to, you know, have him in my corner as well. And shout outs to Kim Promise as well for his contribution to Sugar Cane. Mm. Yeah, now back to um, social corporate responsibility. Right. Um, yeah, I did it before, like I've done it before and I'm going to do it and do it again. You know, like at the end of the day, I love, I think I started doing Save the Kids with Camilo and I did uh, 37 Military Hospital, like did a show, gathered the fans, and then I got some stuff, got sponsors, like, you know, 
baby diapers and I went out there and it's like took some um, mothers who had delivered and they couldn't pay out of the hospital like certain bills yes. so I just like settled the bills and then they, they went home you know which was like great joy to me or for me so I want to do it more I believe I was I have been very very like sh- stressed with regards to like not being available in the country like yeah. running around traveling around I don't shows. think a foundation can handle that for you whilst you you be on the move yes I, but it's also beautiful when you are uh, available uh, you know because also your presence yeah. becomes like a breath of fresh air for mm. these people mm. you know so yeah I'm, I'm hopefully I get to like do it mm. um um Consistently. Consistently. Since you're yes. on Kumasi, let me capitalize on the opportunity to also <laughs> move your lenses to Confanochi. We are doing a Hill Confanochi project. What's that? Hill Confanochi. You know, our biggest hospitals, like, uh, it's like, okay. yeah, our biggest Confanochi okay. hospital. Okay. We are trying to renovate the place. The place is in a very deplorable state. Okay. And we are trying to use the influence of creative to, I mean, I mean, amass for certain kind of support and all that. Okay. So if in case we call on you in connection with that, please do, do. I mean, Kumasi is your second home, so... Yeah. yeah, please, please do. Yeah, 100%. Let's like, wrap up with NFL Remis. Was yeah. it an afterthought? Yo, I'm really like, I feel like I have a, Ivan, I have a strong feeling that I'm going to be doing the NFL performance someday because mm. like everybody keeps like saying NFL mm. instead of NLF. NLF. So, oh, shit. I believe. Yo, NFL is Super Bowl, right? Yeah, I, I believe. <laughs> yeah, NLF, yes. I believe. Nothing lasts forever. Okay. I believe, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe yeah. I'm going to be That's a prophecy that though. So you're going to be on the Super Bowl because people are just mis- misspelling yeah. the, it's NLF. Yeah. Nothing yeah. lasts Forever, yeah. we've been saying NFL, yeah. NFL. It's gonna so happen. maybe that's a prophetic. Uh, it's gonna happen. It's yeah. gonna happen. But you think Kendrick Lamar? Is, uh, that is an after. Kendrick Lamar deserve the NFL spot this year over, um, over. I mean, Lewin. Considering he this, de- he did de- you follow? He deserves the sport to perform, not over Lewin. Lewin, like, is who he is. Like, I wouldn't compare the situation. No, it's not about comparison. On like considering saying, that stage, like I'm saying, like, mm. it's not like, um, it's not like uh, the N- NFL. Um, or Super Bowl team gave us like um, alternatives. It's not like they said, did they say that, oh, it's between um, mm. Kendrick, Lil mm-hmm. Wayne, and this person? Mm-hmm. I don't think they do that. If you had your way, if you were Jay-Z mm. and the options were thrown at you, Lil Wayne, Kendrick, Lamar for Super Bowl. I don't know the dynamics that should be considered. I actually don't know. I don't have the knowledge to even make that decision. So the first, one of the, the biggest dynamics in connection with the fact that it was in Lil Wayne's home home that don't matter I think um, Super Bowl has been hosted in um, homes of artists who didn't perform who hasn't e- haven't even performed yet and the fact that Lerin said it was a dream oh yeah like like I said like <laughs> so it's favor huh it's not even that like this is a big topic and I want to be careful how I say it but I want you to understand that it doesn't matter like whether Lewin has said somewhere that it is his dream the people that selected Kendrick Lamar, like, I don't know the dynamics. I don't know It's the really on business sense. If it is that, then that is them. Because me, I don't have the knowledge to even, like, make, make like, it comment on that. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Because, yes, um, if you look at it critically, yes, Lil Wayne is, like, a big artist. And if that's his home, and if he was on the table, like, if, if he was mentioned to people, then everyone would have expected that. But yes, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, Lil Wayne, you know. Mm-hmm. But for the reason why they chose... Um, Kendrick Lamar, you and I don't know, so I don't think that I'm even in a better position to even, because I don't even follow like uh, like, like that. So let's talk. About, I mean, let's wrap it up with the collaboration of the moment. N- NLF. LF yeah. Remis. Yeah. Was it an afterthought? Because I'm not sure that it was engineered. It looks like the the people called for it when these artists had done their individual verses, or was it a planting or something? How does it? Because all of a sudden, everyone is doing their rendition and boom, official yeah. remix. I started doing like an open verse. Right, right. I started yes. doing an open verse mm. to the song, and um, I just sat in my bed one time and I was like, I think I should just do a Ghana remix. remix. You know, because it's right there in my face. Like, this verse is a fire. Mm. You know, so, yeah, it shouldn't just be a, an IG post. Let's, mm. let's put it out for the people to enjoy. enjoy. So I sat back in my studio and, like, asked everyone to send me, like, the 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 the, the waves. Mm. And I sat back and I just edited, put it all together. And it was making a lot of sense. And I thought about Codex, like, tag, mm. like, the oh, no thingy. And I did that. That's what I, people were saying. How did Codex get in when he was not officially named as part of the collaborators. Yeah, because um, it was supposed to be a sample. Okay. It was meant to be a sample. So you, you took official permission from him? That's what I'm saying. Like, it was meant to be a sample. sample. Mm. That's why you realize that he didn't do a verse. He did, like, 
his backings on there. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So like, um, it was more so like a guess. It was meant to be a sample, mm. and um, um, he 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 was great, gracious enough to say, "I'll come and do it myself." Wow. You know what I'm saying? So he's he's been like super supportive, mm. and mm. I'm really like. Mm. So what was the wow like, verse for you? That that line you had on like, oh, coded like coded is the thing. He sprinkled because we have we had we know that these artists are fire. No, right? I'm talking about the 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 others on the. I mean, medical is on. Uh, Beast trap was on. Kim Paluta, Lyrica Joe. Everyone came with, dear. Like it can never be a one over one. Like I, trust me, everyone mm, was like fifty. Mm, everyone mm, was like hundred. But what are your pickup lines in each of the verses? I will tell you. Um. Mm. Um. Um. Oh yeah, Diodo. That's for that one. And then that is for Paluta, right? That's for Paluta. Mm. And for Kelvin Boy, it's um um oh. for Kelvin Boy, that's a line. Um, I was crazy before, but I'm crazy no more. That one was like the word, you know. Mm. That was the line for me. And um LJ was like Hey bar man, yeah, he even in love yeah, song, you yeah, do bar yeah, for you. Like, yeah, like you mm. know, you know the stand, like it's like the lap. Got stroke like there's a line like that, yeah. and that was it for me. Like yeah. that one kicked it, yeah. and for B strap it was like after you knock him, shut the door. Like hey. you know, don't fall in love. Like that guy, you know, after you knock, just mm. shut the door. Like mm. that was hard. Mm. And um, medical, god damn it, like the whole verse, bro. <laughs> I was like, what? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like orgasm in a police station. You seen problem, problem has, has come. come. It was crazy. <laughs> that's that's hard. hard. That's sad. Amazing. Yeah. Congratulations to yeah. yourself. And we are happy for this major comeback. We are hoping that, I mean, the Camido brand keeps growing. We are proud of you. Yeah. And we want to see you grow, 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 and grow. Yeah. And then, I uh, mean, talk to your new fans, everybody. And let's wrap up this very well. Uh, I want to say thank you mm. to everybody. I want to say thank you really and truly. Like, thank you mm. for the support. Um, I love you guys as much as you love me. And um, I wouldn't be here without you guys, you know. Thanks to um, my friend, Beno Success. Like, he's here in uh, Kumasi. Mm. Like, he always shows, know they me, worry for he always shows hey. me so much love on social media. They like, for sometimes I would, like, wake up and I'll just check my, my, my Twitter. and I, First I, notification. And, and he's coming at somebody who's like, <laughs> hey, wait, wait, Jimmy Papa, go and listen to his music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, mm. I feel like he just loves my music mm. and loves me as an artist and is supportive like that. And I appreciate him genuinely. Um, I appreciate all the fans that truly go out their way to like, you know, talk to other people about my music. I appreciate you, the, um, the OAPs, the DJs out here in Kumasi. In fact, like all across the country. But the boys, when who, you go give who, we something. support us. When you go give we um, boys to something. Okay, cool. You know, sometimes mm. like, because it's like you guys are a lot, sometimes it's hard to like give somebody without giving another person. So I was even telling my team, I was like, let's do a dinner, you know? Let's oh, do, a do, dinner. do not actually, it's far from what I'm asking. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you've been singing for the ladies or all this while. When are you giving boys some, oh. some, Kami, the other side of Camino oh, that we don't know? I thought you were talking about. Oh, no, about no, no, like, no, Payo. Payo, they come, man. I'll be there. That one, they come, they'll go take. Because that one, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, let's take do, for screen inside. I'm let's do take a dinner back and just like yeah, hang, yeah, out hang out with all the OAPs. That. And at some point, I want to do that because let's do this in Kumasi. then be I nice. want everyone to like really and truly open up on their opinions on a brand. And mm. we can take the, the the opinions back home and look through and see what we can do. And Louder. Yeah, you know, so Louder. yeah, I think that would be a let's beautiful make it happen. thing to, ha to, to do, to do. I've already like, I was in Hits FM and I was talking to Andy Dusty and mm. a bunch of them over there. Like, I, I want to make it happen and I will make it happen. Um, with regards to the men, mm. God, uh, yeah, 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 I have like, I have new records that have, I because people say there can be no Camido beyond Afrobeat. Yeah. And we want to see explore a drill, a hip hop. Like, what? yeah, I got it, man. I got it. Like, I got Camido it. on a drill. I really, I got it. Trap. I, I got it. Yeah. I got wow. it and I would do it. Anyway, exclusive right here. Thank you for sticking with us. We've been here with, of course, Mr. Grind on Stop. Ghana is one of Ghana's biggest crossover bracks we have in the music industry. And we've been sharing with us what he's been up to and the new projects out there. Thank you for being, uh, for making us number one always. Continue sticking with us. That's in BSK Signatrix and my humble self MC portfolio. I'll see you when I see you. Yes, sir. Right. Make sure you subscribe, man. Subscribe, support the vibe, man. Yeah. Mido say so. Love. <laughs>